and welcome to the preview show. Joining me this week as we look forward to the Parsons People's Monarchs match against the Sheffield Tigers is Monarch Mitchell Davey and we'll also be speaking to Sheffield team manager Simon Steader of course all with all our regular features. Mitchell, just to look back to the week past uh, very quickly, a uh, convincing win over Peter Brown in the end? Yeah, the team rode you know, exceptionally well. Everyone chipped in with their, with their, you know, their bit and you know, Max is, is really, really hitting his form at reserve, so, you know, and Sam, Sam scoring his first 15-pointer, you know, you can't really ask for a lot more, you know, I'm sure all the boys want more from, from themselves, but, yeah, really good team win. And we're also just about to enter into a busier uh, period of the season, uh, do you think that's going to work for the guys, because the matches that just now seem to have been fairly spread out since the start of the season? A lot of, a lot of the time, yeah, we have been going sort of week to week with our matches, maybe the one away match and one home match every week. Um but you know, um I think it was Josh in the in a in the Friday feature or whatever, um, said that he he wants ride more ride time. So, you know, the busy we are, the the boys are better. Sam's told me he loves being busy, so mm. um, you know, myself I'm I'm happy being busy as well. Um as long as the weather's good it always yeah. helps. But um yeah, as if the busier we are, I think the better we're going to be. You know, as long as there's no injuries or anything, like, obviously that brings brings a bit tougher times. Do, do, I've seen a couple of riders speaking last week about maybe not having as many matches as what they would like. I take it this is just a thing. If if you're on the bike more, the better, more comfortable you feel the bike. You're you're more at one with the bike, so to speak. Yeah, I think personally, I think yeah, a lot of it comes more the mental side of it. It doesn't it doesn't actually affect you know your riding maybe you've got less time to think about riding mm -hmm. so you know you just go and go on and just doing what comes naturally and you know generally that's going to work mm -hmm. best for you as a, as a rider um so yeah you, you know a lot a lot of people do like to be kept busy and that way you're not thinking about it you, you can just jump on your bike and do your job and go home at the end of the night is that when it's important to have the right team around the bike as well yeah that's it everything you got to have everything right you know your bike's running right you, your mechanics, you know, they're they're probably one of the most important things individually, and then a good bunch of guys as a team, you know, those all those you put all those key pieces, you know, everything should run smoothly and yeah, hopefully no complaints and it, you know you get team wins and and individual race wins and things like that. Uh, obviously, it's been a couple of weeks since we spoke to you. You normally are not a regular co-host, so to speak, um, but you've managed to get your first race win of the season under your belt. Um, paid wins now as well. Um, was that really a confidence switch for you as well, getting that race win against Newcastle <laughs> in the championship? Yeah, it's. It, I wouldn't call it so much a confidence. It was more just a relief, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I was starting to put that much pressure on myself to make it happen, you know, and and sometimes that's when you, your mistakes come about and. You know, everyone, you know, has, has noticed my results riding for Stoke. So, you know, people are sort of starting to question, you know, why, why can you not translate it and things like that. So, yeah, it was a massive sigh of relief under that helmet that Friday. Um, and then to, to go to Workington and score a race win there as well late on in the meeting, you know, again, a massive, mm. massive sigh of relief. And... You know, just looking to build on it. Um, it means you just got on your season, really. You don't need to be worrying about stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it's 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 the little things like that 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 eat away at you, and especially when you got time in between meetings. So yeah, you know, I can just kick on now. Friday wasn't the best for me, um, but you know, you got to take the good with the bad. It's it's a long season ahead. You know, it was a it was a fairly big crash. So just happy to walk away and I'll race the following day. So yeah, just get back into it, there's no better way. Of course, you've had maybe a couple of days off that you weren't expecting as well. So, well, I say you weren't expecting, you were maybe expecting to be racing more. It's maybe a different subject for a different time. Um, but feeling better for after a couple of days off is what yeah. I was actually meaning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, lot, a lot of my swelling's gone down, you know, I was, I was struggling to walk Friday night. Um, I, I got home and I was in a bath at two o'clock in the morning trying to make sure I was ready you know, to ride at Stoke the following day again, wasn't really walking real well. Stiffened up in the van on the way down, um, but you know I was able to to loosen up and you know got a couple of points and then unfortunately slid off again while while leading one of my races. So it it, it agitated things a bit, but you know sliding off's not as big an impact as what happened on Friday night. 
it's our part and parcel of the sport though. Yeah, that's it, that's <laughs> why we love it. It's <laughs> exactly. You mentioned Sam earlier on, um, he's one rider who's been very busy this week, um, both in Poland and in Sweden. Um, I don't know if you've been keeping track of his scores much, but he's been fairly healthy scores and fairly good company, especially in Sweden. Um, that's got to help Sam's confidence, especially with his 15 point maximum last week. Um, it seems to be he seems to be getting he, he seems to be getting things together now. Of course, he's going to be moving back to number one soon as well. Yeah, I think. Well, different different circumstances. Me being number seven, I was looking for my my first race win, where Sam was looking for that first <laughs> maximum. And you know, it's you know it's, it's off his back now. He, uh-huh. he can just free flow and ride. And yeah, I, I watched his meeting on on TV last night from Sweden, and he started really well and and really fast. He tailed off a bit at the end, but you know. I don't know what happened, you know, there's, it's just a tough, tough quality, oh. quality line-up out there, and, you know, to see Sam winning, and not only winning by a small margin, but absolutely pulling pulling big leads, and, and that, you know, you can just see it in his riding, he's he's happy, and, you know, as long as he's on the bike, he's going to be happy, and I think rolling in some points. Yeah, he definitely benefits from more meetings, doesn't he? Yeah, that's it, he was, he was telling me about his stats from, I think, I don't know, it was last, last year when he was, he... His highest average month of scores from every league he did was his busiest month, and you know that's quite incredible for yeah. riders. Normally, that's when you see him tail off, but it's probably it's... the only times that you actually feel awake as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that well, well, that's it. I'd like to see what what sort of diet and uh, how much how much caffeine <laughs> Sam was on for for that time of the year. But yeah, you know, if it's what works for him, then get him get him more meetings. You know, <laughs> let him let him go. <laughs> Uh, we're actually going to catch a race from last Friday night, which involves Mitchell and Sam. Uh, a nice little five one here in heat number four from last Friday. We're here for the rerun of heat number four um, after an unsatisfactory start on the rider in yellow. Tom Bacon uh, being warned for, for moving at the start. Um, however, it is all four back, so the lineup is the same. We have Tom Bacon in yellow off at gate one, Mitchell Davy in blue out of gate two, uh, Kenneth Hansen in white out of gate three, and Sam Masters out of gate four in red. And it looks like Sam's made the jump. Uh, Mitchell battling with Kenneth Hansen here as Kenneth Hansen goes for the wide block. Can Mitchell get under him? He's under him just now. As Hansen goes out for the outside line, but Mitchell's done well and has moved him out. So Masters leads with Davy in second, Hansen third and Bacon at the back. Mitchell rides in a little hot there. Manages to hold on. Hansen all over his tail here. As Hansen follows him into the bend here. A better bend by Mitchell there as Bacon comes down at the back. And it doesn't appear as if he's attempting to get up. The red lights will need to come on once again. Have they noticed? They have. Mitchell, nice little 5 1 there with Sam. Always good to get the paid one under the belt. But we move on to, well, wait, this will be aired 5 o'clock Thursday evening, uh, so p- before the Sheffield match down there. Um, just to, uh, in a personal point of view, first, before we look at the match as a whole, for the first time you visit Sheffield since you, you crashed here a couple of years ago, we say Speedway is a mental game. Is, it, is that in your head going down there on Thursday? I'm actually really looking forward to going there, you know. Um, I think. Well, the last away meeting I did was at, at Workington and you know it's again a big fast track and Sheffield different shape but again big and fast so really actually looking forward to getting on the bike and uh, and just just you know giving it my best shot it's, a, it's all you can do um, you know I've come a long way since since that it, that accident um, but you know it's we, we know the dangers when we sign up mm-hmm. so you know it was it was my mistake on the night so I've dealt with it. I've had time to deal with it. So, bring it on. Let's let's go for it. And obviously, the bigger picture here is is that the, you you need to be scoring points for the team. You can't you can't be thinking about anything else, really. Yeah, no, that's it. If I just go and and focus on doing my job and you know maybe getting a a few extra points here and there where I can, and you know you know that'll take away from me thinking about the past. You know, you can't change the past. It's happened. Uh-huh. We're just gonna go forward now course and we go down there with a four point lead but things could have been a lot worse for the first leg yeah it was a very bad start to to that meeting you know i think the track might have caught us out a bit that night being a, a, a tad slicker than normal and by the time we got set up you know you could see we were starting to come back in our own but yeah a really really slow start sort of cost us you know what could have been a 14 point lead essentially you know having to bring back that 10 point deficit that we were down but 
you know, Mark's been to Sheffield, Ricky's rode for Sheffield, mm-hmm. Sam rides Sheffield really well. Um, I'm sure Pico's going to love it. He loves nothing more <laughs> than getting the leg back. So, um, yeah, we've got boys, you know, who can score points. Yeah. So, let's go for it. Of course. Uh, just ahead of Thursday's match, we caught, me and Mitchell both uh, caught up with Simon Stead earlier on this evening to get his thoughts on the matches against Sheffield this week. Delighted to say now joining us in the preview show is Sheffield team manager Simon Stead. Simon, two big matches ahead this week. You looking forward to it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a challenge for us. Uh, we obviously had a good result up there uh, a while back now, but uh, we certainly no room for for a couple of tough meetings. So uh, always an exciting place to go. Uh, always a well prepared track at Edinburgh. Um, not necessarily what you would say uh, a Sheffield team uh, went well at, but we have performed well there already this season. So um, you know I'm looking for another another solid performance, and we need to keep up. Uh, winning ways at home as well. Just to look at Thursday's match first, Simon, obviously you were 10 points up at Armadale uh, and eventually lost the, lost the match by four points. Did it end up a dis- disappointing result in the end? Um, I, I don't think so. Um, because if somebody had told me, you know, we'd only have a four-point deficit from, from, a, uh, from a meeting at, at Edinburgh, I would snap the hand off with that. So um, we can't do anything about about what happened in the meeting um, so we just have to look at the positives uh, four point deficit uh, it's a fantastic result uh, but, I, but I know it's, it's not going to be an easy meeting and at Sheffield on Thursday they'll, they've got some more than capable riders at Sheffield uh, so I'm expecting it to go down to the wire that was going to be my next question, Simon. Is it ironic that Sheffield have actually got riders who like Armadale and Edinburgh have got riders who like the big tracks as well? Yeah, exactly. So it is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cracking meeting for, for the fans. Uh, it's going to be a tough one for the riders. Uh, nerve wracking for the management. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it should be uh, should be a cracker on Thursday. And, um, talking... Talking for my boys, they're, they're all excited. They, they certainly know that the job's not done, uh, albeit a fantastic result at Edinburgh to make life a little bit easier, but um, we know we're... To look at Friday's match, Simon, uh, you obviously travel up to Armadale without Josh Grisonic and Josh Bays, but you get two good guests in Aaron Summers and Cody Garcia. Yeah, it's, uh, obviously I would have preferred, uh, preferred to have my own guys in there, Josh... Uh, but both Joshes are, are riding very, very well at the moment, so I'm disappointed that we that we haven't got them. But um, two great guests, like you said, um, get on very, very well with, with Aaron, um, and you know they're capable of doing a job for us around there. Uh, but I don't for one minute anticipate having uh, the same sort of meeting as as last time, but uh, but it would be very nice if we did. Can you take confidence from the the last match at Armadale, Simon? I think it, I think you have to give us confidence, uh, but I think uh, the reality of it is it's going to be a, it's going to be a completely different meeting, and um, we're really going to need to step up to the plate and uh, be at our very best. Uh, just to talk about yourself for a second, Simon, uh, you enjoying being in the pits as a team manager now? Uh, it's definitely different. Uh, I'm enjoying it more than I than I anticipated. Really, um, I was unsure on how I would feel about uh, still being involved and not being able to to get on and and actually ride the bike but actually I'm really enjoying it it's, uh, we've got a great a great bunch of, of guys a fantastic team spirit um, and, I, and I'm really enjoying being there and, and helping them so uh, the results are, are coming and they're being positive so um, all in all I'm having a, having a, having a great great time doing that and um, you know hopefully hopefully some of my experience and everything is helping the boys as well Simon, I know it's the early days in the season, but what would your assessment be of the Tigers so far this season? Uh, I've got to be happy. I think I, I know we need our away form needs to be needs to be better. Um, apart from the result at Scunthorpe and, and the result at Edinburgh, uh, we've been quite disappointing away from home so far. Um, but our home form has been very good, so we know where the improvements got to come from. Uh, we've had a little shuffle round and um, put Josh at four instead of two, and uh, he's he's gained in confidence again. And I think the the shuffle there has probably helped that. Um, so 
So I'm looking forward to the to the rest of the season. I know there's there's many good teams that are in the league, and there doesn't seem to be any easy meetings this year. The, the strength of the league in general is has has improved, I think. So um, it's an exciting league to be involved in, and uh, and one that I know is going to be very very tough to come out on top of. Well, Simon, thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you and your Tigers team on Friday. Bye bye, mate. Well, the restart without Andre Compton. Let's hope it works out as another good race as it seemed it was going to be. Stays away better this time. It might come around the outside, but I think Justin's uh, on a good second bend. So Sedman leads. What can Stead do about it? Oh dear, Derek Snedden's come a cropper now. He's going to get himself out the way, I think. Which allows Sedgman to lead, but Stead's coming past him here, is he? Not quite. Great riding by Sedgman. He's just doing the right thing in time. Holding the line. Here comes Stead up the inside this time. Sedgman's still there, just. Now Stead blasting for the inside. Just short. Tremendous battle. Looks like Sedgman's going to hold him off. Stead goes for the big wide one, but he's got too much to do, I think. Terrific win for Justin Sedgman. Derek managed to get off to allow the run to continue. So that's three to Justin Sedgman and four to Simon Stead, which is a lot better than a 2-6, which it would have been if Simon had got through. Well done to Justin Sedgman. He's got uh, three unbeaten rides already. Simon saying there... He he recognises the threat that's going to come for Edinburgh, I would think would be fair to say. Um, he knows that obviously, that, as we've said previously, that Sam, Ricky, there's, there's dangers in there for Sheffield. This is this is not by any means cut and dry that Edinburgh are going out the cup this evening. No, that's what we can't we can't treat it like that. You know, we don't have a big lead, but you know, essentially, this was supposed to be the first leg. So, mm. you know, if we treat it like a first leg, and we either got to keep it really close or, or just go all out for the win. And, uh -huh. And, you know, whatever the result is, the result is, again, you, you can't change it. And so, yeah, we just got to really work hard to make sure that we put ourselves in the best position possible. Of course. Uh, Friday night, Mitchell, uh, the Tigers come to Armadale. Um, it's going to be another tough match. They've got some really good guests in, as we were speaking about to Simon there, um, without George Cruzonic and George Bates on Friday. But they do bring in Aaron Summers and Cody Garcia. We've seen what Cody could do the last time Red Car were here. We obviously know what Aaron can do, he's here often enough, um, <laughs> is our replacement number one. Um, they're good guests for the away side, and of course we've seen how well they did the last time they were up, um, but is there a case of maybe, can I, you had your one meeting, <laughs> your one good meeting here, and you show you that that was a wee bit of a flick? Yeah, that's it, we, um, you know, we, we, we have possibly had our guard down that, that meeting, you know, I think we were on a, on do, a good do roll. Do you think there was time. too much focus on trying to get a big lead rather than a lead? Because um, there was a lot of talk of that before the meeting. Yeah, I don't know. And I think, uh, for me personally, I was thrown by the rain off the previous day. I, uh, I sort of found myself at, at, a, at a loose end. I had no uh, nothing to do. You know, I was you know expecting to be travelling, mm -hmm. racing, and then getting up early the following morning and washing bikes. But, yeah, for, when it all sort of unravelled, you know... Maybe we, we got too relaxed about it. Um, so, yeah, there's not really a lot you can say. You know, we just got to go there with the same intention that we do every meeting, you know, to get to get the points in the bag for, for the team and for the season and not not think about that one. You know, it was not not the best result, that the first leg. So if we can go and just treat this as a as a completely different meeting and pretend, you know, that they haven't been there, I don't, I don't know. And, yeah, not focus on how close it was. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the Monarch's going to be missing Josh Pickering, who's away in World Under 21 duty, Mitchell. Um, it's going to be a big loss for the Monarchs. Um, it was good, obviously, career experience going away. But the, the, the Monarchs gave up the, the right to the guests to use the RR. Showing a bit of faith in yourself, Max, and I think it would be Mark that would take a ride. Um, so it shows a bit of faith in the squad that's already there. Yeah, especially, I think, at, at home, you know, it's... You know, it, it could prove beneficial, it, it might not, you know, but um, 
you know, Mark's been on cracking form this year. Um, Max is definitely coming into his own now, and I'd like to think that you know my form's getting there as well. So there's there's no real reason why we shouldn't be able to to cover you know um, the rides and and get the points that the team needs. Mm-hmm. The teams behind the Monarchs and the SGB Championship table seem to be kind of piling up at the minute. Um, taking a look at it, I mean, I, I seen the, the former Monarch Justin says we going on about they were the team to beat, and suddenly they're in third place. Um, but it, it it's imperative now to get wins under the belt, especially at home, um, to keep the points rolling on because if the teams are piling up behind it, it's all about playoff positions at the end of the day. It's not all about finishing top. Yeah, that's it. You got to you know you got to be in that that position at the end to, to, to go for the title. Um, there's no point in winning all your meetings at the start of the year and then tailing off and, yeah. and missing out on the, I think this is the top four that make it through uh-huh. or whatever. Um, but, yeah, home, home meetings are, are crucial to win. Um, you know, that's that's sort of the... The benchmark. Yeah, the benchmark, of, yeah, I guess, of what you, you're trying to achieve and, you know, pick up points here and there or home and uh, when you're away. Um, but obviously, yeah, we've had a couple of close calls and and a draw at home, you know. So you know we can't afford to let any more home matches slip. Is it, do, do riders look at the, the the league table to see where how things stand or whatever? I tell you the truth, it's just too busy. I haven't. Um, you know, I like to. I don't, I don't want to put too much pressure on it. Again, we're still, you know, early early season, sort mm-hmm. of coming coming up to the halfway point. Um, I know a few of the boys. May or may not. Um, it's not something that's really spoke about. Um, there's there's no real point in speaking about it just yet. You know, not mm-hmm. until the uh, business end of the season comes in. Of course, uh, we're going to now take a look back at regular feature of Blaster Plus, and Mike's provided two excellent match, uh, excellent videos here. Uh, one for Peter Hall, one for Amadeo, and there's a few legends in there as well. Well, really fly around Owlerton, but one of the problems for the Sheffield Riders is that their home meetings are on a Thursday night, so they only have 24 hours to adjust their machines to small track settings and get themselves up here to Powder Hall. And certainly, again, the Marks men have made the best starts there. Mike Faria swinging around that first turn. Lawrence here's got a hard first corner. Uh, Dorian's got inside him. Lawrence will have a bash around the outside here, but Stancil's moved out on him, and the Sheffield men in second and third this time. And Lawrence may have to consider an inside corner if he's going to have a chance of getting through. He's right on the back wheels of the two Continentals, but how do you get through that? Well, he might have a chance up the inside this time. Mike Furry is clear, but Lawrence here battling like fury. Swinging for an outside corner this time. There's just no gap there, is there? He might get through this time. He has. Lawrence is into at least third, he's alongside Adorian and he's gone through to second, can he hang on, Stancil's come roaring back, Hare's in second, Stancil almost alongside him as they get to the final corner, Stancil races in, Hare on the wider run and he's going to get second, terrific racing, great stuff from Lawrence Hare there, well, he deserved that. Heat 9 will be an important race, Ross Brady coming from gate 1 really needs to get to grips with his bike on the track and turn in a decent ride here. Scott Smith's in gate two, Kevin Little rides from gate three, five points so far for Kevin. And tactical substitute again, Andre Compton rides from gate four. He replaces Andrew Moore will have to get a ride later on. from the inside. Kevin Little and Ross Brady, I think, leading down the back. Oh, look at Compton, my goodness. A shoulder charge on Kevin from the outside there. And he's gone through the middle. What a tremendous effort by Compton. He was a wee bit airy on that first lap, but it came off for a minute. You have to give him credit for the final pass, which was superb. And Brady's come back on him, and Little's come back on him as well. Sensational speedway. It's Brady leading from Compton with Little in third. Unbelievable racing here. Brady out wide, Compton wild. Little trying to come inside him. 
What lap are we on? This is the end of lap three. What a race. Brady leads the way. He's got himself going. Compton round the outside. Little locking up on the inside, trying to find room. And look at Compton. He's gone right round Ross Brady there to go to the front. Brady trying to come back. And Compton gets a win in a magnificent race. Thanks to Mike Hunt after his blast on the past. Mitchell, thank you very much for joining us and I hope you have a successful trip down to Sheffield and you can get us into the next round of the Cup. Uh, and of course, we'll see you all Friday. Don't forget, you can go over to the website now and buy your tickets uh, for tomorrow night's match against the Sheffield Tigers. Uh, but for this week, and we'll see you on Saturday morning for the Friday Focus. But until then, good night.